Welcome back ladies and gents to yes no maybe so to the final part of my the outer worlds walkthrough welcome back back Man, It's about to go down a brave new world Captain, and all that stuff as it appears We may soon be embarking for our maximum security prison planet I believe the crew would like to speak with you to as you humans put it air some concerns Well, folks, I ain't exactly keen on busting into a prison, but riddling bored stooges with bullets does sound like a ride and a half. To extract the scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth, but that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. If we can't ban the Finians, we have to free them if we've any hope to saving the colony. I am programmed to warn you whenever you exhibit inclinations toward risky behavior. Breaking into Tartarus will not be easy. Getting in is the simple part. It's getting out again that's the trouble. Trust me, I know. Let's just do it. Kick down some doors, grab Doc Wells, and cut a path out. We don't need a plan. We got guns. If you really mean to do this, you should see to your final affairs and close out any unfinished business. Once you sneak into Tartarus, you may be there a while, or permanently. It's the craziest plan I've ever heard. And I mean that as a compliment. You didn't hire me to think, and I ain't about to start now. You're my boss, and I'll walk into fire with you. I think it's insane, but maybe the colony needs a healthy dose of insanity right about now. I know it's dangerous, and I won't lie and say I'm not scared out of my wits. But I couldn't live with myself if we didn't do something. You're asking for more than bravery from us, Captain. But there are worse ways to go than dying for a good cause. I'm in. Let Sam get the grime out. It's what our units do best. The entire plan is a terrible idea, but I admire your bravado, Captain. Which leads me to illogically believe, against the odds, that you will be successful. If we don't make it, at least it'll be a great story. Got my trusty tossball stick, got my ass kicking boots. I'm ready, boss. Outstanding. You can count on us, Captain. We're crew, for real crew. That means we got each other's backs, right? Never thought I'd volunteer to break into a prison. Seems like your tendency towards risky behavior is rubbing off on me, Captain. Command not recognized. Waiting on your command, Captain. All right, Team Beta of the Space Cadets, Crew Space Ghost to Coast, and all that good jazz. We are off to Tartarus. Maybe I should save. <laughs> Let's just do a savey save just in case. To Tartarus, the prison. Isn't that what Greek mythology? Norse, I forgot. I, I just saved. We, we can save again, just in case. <laughs> Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make the actual possible is coming. I wish there was a way to turn down the achievement popping noise. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me in the event that you do not return. I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another Captain unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. 
Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I wager it'll take a bit longer than it takes you to lose your patience and storm out of your ship looking to get shot. To be honest, that'd make my job a lot easier. You come out, we shoot you full of holes, and then everyone goes about their day worry-free. Except you. You'll be dead. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. I just couldn't see you clearly before. Screen's on the frit. Damn thing. But for the record, now that I hear you, I totally recognize you. Totally. You're, um, you, of course. Obviously. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? All right. Wish me luck, Ada. Goodbye. Can we play the Avengers Portals theme song? I wish we could take everyone with us. That would be really cool. Uh, let's see. Let's get it with Sam. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Ouch! Who's saying ow? Excuse me. I'll just go this way. assessment the labyrinth on tartarus task classification easy easy you say that again we did good voice crack sorry i'm really tired i went through i ran through a lot of technical problems before i started recording would you like sam to tidy up this area waiting for confirmation command confirmation command not Received. Alright, then let's go. Do 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 you saw the end of my butt crack. Now let's go. Okay. Hold up. What's our reputation look like now? Oh, they're so bitter. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about this. I respect my character. For some reasons that I shall not get into. Okay. Do 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 Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Do 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 
Come on, make it over here. <laughs> Dude, I might actually pass this without fighting anyone. Why well, that be some? Let's go, troops. Stellar base counting on us. Who was that? you here? I didn't think we were hiring more staff. That's great. Sounds like the Terminator theme. Much appreciated. I'll get out of your way. Yeah, Iconoclast, get it. Dee do dee do dee dee do dee do. This is my 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 sneaky music. who it is I'll be damned I was prepping the studio for our announcement and here you are as a bonus ah oh, and the wayward doctor are you about done with your escapades we have faces that need lifting after all these days I'm more interested in breaking them wouldn't mind taking a swing at yours and oh I, I had heard you were dragging around a repurposed janitorial mechanical my staff jokes that it's because you're a walking pile of refuse. Interactive database updated. The unique organic substance labeled Chairman has been classified as filth, imminent for incineration. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. My word. You've correctly identified the most recognizable man in the colony. Remarkable. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working class man. It's a miracle. Oh yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done, it's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? At least that means someone's recognizing our work. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. If I and my people can ride it out in luxury and happiness, yes, yes, I would. I don't know if you've noticed, Captain, but Halcyon's pretty much a lost cause. I'll admit, there's no shortage of talent and scientists and engineers there. Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive, uh, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. Good job, team. What's this? Cameras. Re cameras. Re re cameras. Oh, my God. 
Oh, sorry, nose itchy. All right, back in it. Okay, three, two, go. Dee doo dee dee doo dee doo dee doo dee doo. Dee -doo. All the colonists I've helped over the hours, they're coming to my defense. All right, MSI. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and fight. Dude, I don't think I will need to fire a single bullet here. I just earned a fine bonus. Typical job ahead? Consider equipping a pack of Sam's Special Salt and Stain Out Remover. It's ruthless on residual blood splatter. I hope you're right about this, Captain. Let's do this. Captain, you have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm aware of your diplomatic talents, Captain. You have a gift for manipulation, but I warn you, I'm no easy mark. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon, and therefore you are my enemy. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. Fair enough. I'm giving you exactly one chance to parlay with me. Interesting that you think I'm going to die here. I believe I'm more than capable of taking you on. Fair point. I don't know how you've managed to defy the odds. By every reasonable estimate, you should be dead. Yet here you stand. I've devoted my entire life to protecting Halcyon. I'm not afraid to die in the line of duty. Don't you think I know that? Yes, I made mistakes. Costly mistakes. Leaving you alive was the worst of them all. You were always an unknown variable. I tried to recruit you. But you threw your lot in with that madman, Phineas Wells. I'm aware of Dr. Wells' plan. Revive some brilliant scientists and engineers from the Hope and work with them to save the colony. He's already revived you, after all. Fifty or sixty years ago, I might have agreed with you. But we've passed the point of no return. The best scientists in Halcyon can't save us now. I appreciate your confidence, Captain. But so long as you're allied with Dr. Wells, we can never work together. I haven't given up on the program yet. You've caused some complications, but I can improvise. I can fix this. I haven't lost control of the Labyrinth yet. Our security system is still operational. I can still put a stop to you. When you put it that way, no. Not in the least. Damn it all. Very well. You win. I'm familiar enough with your methods to realize my chances of survival are low. Congratulations, Captain. You've outplayed me. I accept your terms and will return Dr. Wells to your care. I just hope you've made the right decision. The fate of the colony is in your hands now. 
I bid you farewell, Captain. Yay, we did it! Yo, do we just complete the last mission of the game without firing a single bullet? Man, I raked up my guns and everything for no reason. I was about to go in hard, ham, in the paint, freaking Waka Flock of Flame style, you know what I mean? Didn't need to. Ellie, Sam, you served me well, folks. Can't reach it. Yay. God, I'm almost at level 30. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You must have said something to get under the Conde's skin. She's gone, and I don't think she's coming back. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. I'm all right, thanks to you. Akande wanted my cooperation. I'm quite sure she would have beaten it out of me if you hadn't arrived. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. You might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you, but after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists, each of my experiments ended in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. Thank you. Perhaps in time I'll... Learn to forgive myself. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. 
Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hope's brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? When I revived you, I thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. MSI's workforce swelled, and the Iconoclast enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took sublight salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Lay Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junle the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the Groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some 
even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Milstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless, unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself. Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, Tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. It was widely suspected that Sophia Akande was the true power behind Chairman Rockwell. However, after the riots on Tartarus, she was never again seen in the colony. Various theories circulated as to her fate. Some believed she boarded an interstellar ship capable of journeying to a distant colony. Others believed she died trying to escape Tartarus. Some few suggest she fled to Monarch, where she continued to live among a small band of loyalists. There is another theory, which suggests that Sophia's encounter with you changed her, and she deliberately retreated from public view but continued supporting the colony in secret. When Dr. Wells began reviving the Hope's colonists, he found himself with a sudden windfall of additional supplies and resources, courtesy of an anonymous donor. If Wells knew who his supplier was, he never told a soul. Chairman Rockwell served as the public face for the changes in Halcyon to come. Whenever you needed strings pulled or a voice to sell a policy change, Rockwell was only too happy to oblige. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. 
Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. And that, ladies and gents, was The Outer Worlds. Thank you all for watching this and thank you all for joining me for this walkthrough. Thank you, thank you, thank you much. I appreciate it. Wow. I, this is the game that I needed. This is the game that I've missed. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, let me just say, I mean, first of all, full disclosure, I did receive uh, this game free and early from Private Division, uh, the publishers behind uh, The Outer Worlds. So take my opinions what I'm about to say about this game with a grain of salt, of course. This game is great. Nay, even amazing. It's definitely one of my favorite games of this uh, this year. One of my favorite games of this generation. And heck, it probably I probably need to sit on this game for a couple of days to even a week to decide if it's my game of the year uh, uh, or not. Uh, but it's definitely my top five favorite games. Of this uh, of this year, this game is freaking phenomenal. It's a game I've been looking forward to. It's the game that I needed. That I think fans of Fallout and uh, definitely yeah, fans of Fallout needed after did the disappoint uh, the 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 disappointment of Fallout 76. And even though Fallout 4 was great in some aspects, but it was very predictable, kind of meh like around the edges and a very and had a very predictable story it was all right like i feel like the talk behind that game fell off a cliff after what a couple like a month a month and a half since the in my opinion the better rpg the witcher 3 came out like months earlier um this is a game that people needed who are fans of fallout and this is why i need it um even though this game was an open world i'm glad it was an open world because obsidian the developers behind the developers behind this game focus a lot more on attention to detail the story the characters your relationships with the characters the weapons the combat and the uh, overall uh, plot and story and your the choices you can make in this game that matter like that's another thing i feel like i've been missing uh in a while in game I mean, I feel like what was the last game I played that had like your decisions actually matter? Like you could actually F things up. I mean, Greedfall, I would say, was probably the last one, but on the scale of like a Fallout slash Skyrim Witcher game, it was probably, I would say, Jesus, was it really The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt? I guess Fallout 4 to an extent. But I was gonna say it's that's okay, honestly, but they never did they never delve in too deep into the whole like hey you, you can really if you say this you can actually F up a couple of storylines in um and in the future. Because I went the the good route. Like we got the good ending and doing so actually knocked out some um some uh, main missions. Like there's like an extra what three or four main missions that we didn't even get to we didn't even 
we need to get to since uh we went uh we went with the good ending which is like that's freaking awesome i feel like assassin's creed didn't really do that uh, the fallout 4 kind of did it because we all went through the same main missions and whatnot that's really awesome man i'm free i'm free i'm just freaking i love this game because it's like i needed this game after fallout 76 was a big di disappointment but there's a delayed uh wastelander wastelanders with uh until next march of next year uh which had the whole uh freaking whatchamacallit ladies and gents the whole npcs and stories and my controller disconnected whoops let me reconnect my controller um it had npcs and whatnot it's like things that people come to fallout for uh and whatnot it's just like ah oh, man like i needed this game i need the story driven the the narrative the choices and the relationships with the characters and the crew I'm like i needed this like this is something i needed it i know i'm saying that a lot because it's true like i feel like it's the same thing what i said about borderlands 3 like after the disappointments of a lot of looter shooter games and whatnot the announcement of borderlands 3 people lost their freaking minds because they finally a looter shooter that did it right route the gate with borderlands 1 and borderlands 2 like there was a lot of missed opportunities with the division and destiny and all of its ilks that missing it around the gate i mean division 2 kind of nailed it when it came out but borderlands 3 uh borderlands 3 pretty much nailed it around the get-go and i feel the same way with the outer world so I have to give Obsidian a round of applause because they nailed it right out the gate. Like, hey, here's what you need: like a story-driven, um, uh, story-driven narrative-based. Your choices matter. RPG, first-person shooter RPG. I'm like, yes, thank you because I missed this. And uh, what was it? I think a week ago they said that the sequel to this game uh, won't be open world, which I'm very happy about because uh, because what this took me about like 20, 25 hours to beat, which is not that bad uh like it, i think it's a lot better uh not being an open world i would say that it does kind of uh, uh miss slash lack and this is my personal opinion the mystery and wonder of like fallout new vegas like in my personal opinion because if fallout new vegas or fallout 3 or 4 where you like roam around and uh, ro roam into a, a random direction you'll find like a random like building or like a structure or like a cave or like a like your vault the vault board will come up and be like what the fuck is going on what is this like i feel like the outer world is missing that aspect but since the uh, obsidian has been bought by microsoft and uh and the outer worlds too it's probably gonna be an xbox exclusive slash windows pc exclusive that like, hopefully they can make uh, have a lot more budget behind them so they can add that type of wonder and without them going open world like the the maps themselves can be a lot big a little bit bigger a little bit more denser but not like fallout w witcher 3 size open world which i am 100 on board for all that good jazz so yeah the outer worlds ladies and gents i think it's a great game i mean i honestly can see where a sequel i mean my for my thought was where a sequel could go to is um the whole earth thing we lost contact with earth we don't know if earth exists anymore i'm like oh it harkens back to the one point that the one lady um Hagen Hagen on 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 Groundbreaker where she got silenced because she's like conspiracy theorists about aliens and stuff like that. I'm like, what if aliens do exist? Like Obsidian introduces aliens to this game, ladies and gents, and somehow aliens took over Earth or they like hid it or something that something to deal with aliens. I mean, I mean, I think that would be really cool. I mean, I've wanted that kind of with Fallout. Because if I'm if I'm not mistaken, they they had there was like the ray gun or whatever in Fallout Three or, or New Vegas. If I'm not mistaken, there was only one alien type DLC. It was Mothership Zeta, and I think that was just for Fallout Three, and that was like the only kind of science of aliens in Fallout. I'm like, man, I wish there was more of that, and hopefully there could be like some type of alien life form or whatever and fall and excuse me in the Outer Worlds too. So yeah, like I said, I love this game. I've seen it, they knocked out the part. So yeah, Outer Worlds, great game amazing game uh, so yeah, for my next gameplay walkthrough, ladies and gents, I just want to touch on this for a quick second. I'm, pl I'm planning on doing a full walkthrough of Death Stranding starting uh, next week, next Friday when it comes out, November 8th. Then after that will be Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, the week after, the Friday after that. Then after that, ladies and gents, I have no clue. Halo 1, Batman Arkham Asylum, we have lots and lots of choices. So yeah, make sure you're still subscribed to this channel. Make sure you have that notification bell ring so you know, uh, so you get notified when I post videos because there's still lots of content coming to my channel from now to the rest of 2019 so be on the lookout for all that good jazz 
And yeah, I think that's about it. Like I said, ladies and gents, thank you all for watching this and thank you all for joining me for this walkthrough. Thank you all for the love, love and support on this walkthrough and on my other walkthroughs and on my channel as a whole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much I appreciate it. Before I let you guys go, if you guys could please leave a like on this video. If you guys like what you saw, please subscribe for more content. It helps with the channel a lot. Also, when you do subscribe, make sure you click that little bell next to the subscribe button so you can start receiving notifications when I post videos. Uh, please, uh, please share my channel and my videos so all your friends, family, cats, and dogs, and whoever who not. And you guys can all follow me on Twitter at beta b a y t u h. And I also have a Patreon page. If you guys could please go over there, donate starting at the two dollar tier, so I can keep my cool shits. And that's over here at this YouTube.com slash beta. That is Patreon.com slash beta b a y t u h. Also, if you guys don't have a Patreon page or you don't want to use Patreon but you have a PayPal account, I also have a paypal account you can donate to that is paypal.me slash beta b a y t u h and without further ado ladies and gents my name is malcolm also known as beta and i will catch you guys all on the flip side peace